I'm weird when it comes to using a browser on iPhone. On one hand, I have Chrome installed and Chrome is the main browser I use where I have my personal, YouTube and work profile saved. And it's also the browser I mainly use in both my work PC and MacBook Pro. On the other hand, I also use Safari quite a lot, but I use it more for light browsing or looking something up quickly. However, since I've been diving deeper into the Apple ecosystem, I figure it was time to give Safari a real shot to see what it's actually capable of beyond just quick searches. And honestly, I was not expecting to like it this much. Safari on iPhone has slowly become my go-to browser. It's fast, it's smooth, and it's packed with smart features I didn't even know existed. So let me walk you through the features that convinced me to stop defaulting to Chrome and start making Safari my daily driver on iPhone. Make sure you watch until the end as you may learn a thing or two. Ever clicked a few links deep and then wish you could jump back several pages at once? In Safari, you can just press and hold the back or forward arrow. A list of your entire browsing history in that tab pops up and you can pick the page you want. It saved me recently when I was shopping for new shirts, clicked a few related links and needed to return a few steps to the shirt I wanted. Instead of tapping the back arrow multiple times, I simply went back to the exact page I needed. Once you're moving around pages like a pro, the next thing you want to do is share them. And Safari's got some sneaky tricks for that too. So you're on a page you want to share, but you don't want to share just a basic link. Maybe you're sending it to someone who needs a clean printable content, or maybe you want to save a copy for offline access. Safari actually lets you share an entire web page as a PDF. Just tap the share button, then at the top of the share sheet, tap options. From there, you can choose PDF instead of the default link format. I use this all the time when I'm researching something, especially if I want to archive an article. It's super helpful for things like recipes, instructions, or articles. Basically, anything you want to keep in its full form. Also, related to sharing is one of the most underrated productivity tricks in Safari, and that is sharing directly to notes or reminders. From the share sheet, you can save a web page straight into a note. Perfect for bookmarking articles, ideas, or even links to reference later. Or if it's something time sensitive, like a gift idea or a page I need to follow up on, I'll just send it to reminders. You can even use Siri and say, and Safari will automatically create and attach the current web page to a reminder. The best part, these aren't just text entries. Safari includes a full link right in the note or reminder, so you can tap it later and jump straight back to the page. No hunting through your tabs or browsing history. Okay, this one you may already be aware of, but the functionality is not always easy to find. Let's say you're in a massive web page and need to find a specific word, like a phone number, a product name, or an address. Instead of scrolling endlessly, Safari has a built-in find on page feature. Just tap the address bar, start typing your word, and scroll down on the on this page section. Tap that, and Safari will highlight every instance on the page. Alternatively, you can click on the reader view icon on the left side of the address bar and then click on the search icon to use the same functionality. I use this constantly when I'm trying to skim long articles or pull details fast from product pages. Next, we have Safari's reading list, which is one of those low key features that quietly punches way above its weight. It's not just for bookmarking articles. Think of it as your personal offline library. Whenever you come across an article, guide or blog post you want to check out later, just tap share and then select add to reading list. It's super quick and unlike a regular bookmark, it's designed specifically for long form content you want to come back to. But here is where it gets really powerful. If you head to settings and look for Safari, you can turn on the automatically save offline feature. This tells Safari to download the full content of that page in the background. That includes text, images, everything. So you can access it later, even if you're offline. I use this all the time before a flight. I'll queue up a bunch of articles, stuff like iOS updates, Apple blogs, or tech thing pieces, and read them on the plane. Zero Wi-Fi needed. And the best part, it syncs across your Apple devices using iCloud. So you can save something on your iPhone and finish reading it later on your iPad or your Mac. Next, we have website settings. If you tap the reader view icon and then tap the ellipsis, you can view the website settings section. Here, you can customize each site. For example, turn on use reader automatically for sites you always read and Safari will open them in reader mode by default. You can also request the desktop site or toggle camera and location permissions per site. I set my favorite blogs to always use reader and for sites with poorly designed mobile layouts, I set them to desktop view. By the way, if you're finding these Safari tips useful, 
hit that like button and consider subscribing for more iPhone and iOS tips and tricks. Moving right along, one of Safari's best features is iCloud tabs. If you have Safari enabled in iCloud on all your devices, you can see tabs open on your iPad or Mac right on your iPhone. I use this to continue what I was reading at home when I hop on my iPhone elsewhere. For example, I might start an article on my iPad and later tap its tab from my iPhone start page to pick up seamlessly. Now, once all your devices are synced and you're stacking up tabs like I do, it helps to have a quick way to find what you're looking for. When you have a ton of tabs open, use Safari's hidden tab search. Tap the tab buttons on the bottom right to enter tab view. Then swipe down on the screen and a search bar will appear at the top. Type part of the page title and you can filter to that tab specifically. And hey, while we're streamlining things, let's talk about one of the most annoying parts of browsing, captchas. Hating captchas? iPhone has a feature called automatic verification that can skip many I'm not a robot puzzles. In settings, go into your iCloud account and click on sign in and security. Make sure you scroll all the way to the bottom and turn on automatic verification. With this on, Safari will handle recognized CAPTCHA checks behind the scenes. I hardly see those annoying image grids anymore. It won't work 100% of the time, but it cuts down on the clicks significantly. All right. Now let's finish strong with a few built-in gestures that make Safari way more fluid than it gets credit for. Safari on iPhone has a few gestures that speed things up. First, you can swipe left or right on the address bar to switch between tabs. Second, from the bottom of the screen where the address bar is, you can swipe up and hold to jump into the tab overview as if you type the tabs button. So I often just swipe to change tabs or swipe up to get a bird's eye view of everything I have going on. It feels natural once you actually try it. As you can see, Safari on iPhone is surprisingly powerful once you dig in. It's fast, well integrated, and now fits smoothly into my workflow. I switched from thinking of it as just an iPhone browser to actually using it as my default on mobile. Give some of these tips a try and you might fall in love with Safari too. What are your favorite Safari tips or hidden tricks? Drop them in the comments below. I always enjoy discovering new ones. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe for more iPhone and iOS content. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.